the Mormon Entertainer here, the most inspirational moment in all of Ayrshire here, back. Instead of podcast day today on Friday, by the time this goes live, I am going to already be in Dublin as I fly out on the Thursday. Today marks the return of Kenzie Retro's Top 10. And today, we're over halfway through the year already, so where has the time gone? So it's time to go through my top 10 games of 2018 so far. For this list, I'm going through the best games of the year so far, and the rules are as follows. The game has to have a 2018 initial worldwide release date. One every Trooper franchise, they need to be games I've played, and no remasters or ports from other systems. So that rules out at the moment Shadow of the Colossus on the PlayStation 4 and the Crash Endgame Trilogy, which I ruled out last year because it was a remaster on the PlayStation 4 of the first three Crash Bandicoot games. I can't include it here either because it got ported from the PS4 to Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and PC. I can't include Neo Tomata either because that was in a lot of people's top 10 games of 2017 and it came out on PlayStation 4 and it got ported to Xbox One just last month. I can't include that either. So, without further ado, let's see what the best games of this year have been so far as we count down my top 10 games of 2018 so far. <laughs> Number 10. Ooh, goody, goody, goody. Now, on paper, people were highly anticipating this new entry, and sadly, for me, it didn't live up to the hype. Far Cry 5 sees you head to Hope County, Montana, and Eden Gate, to be more specific, to take out Joseph Seed, who's the leader of a cult called Project. While the story is good, adding social commentary to get players thinking and visually looks amazing, the gameplay is where points get docked off in a huge way. How huge? Let me change the question. How brainless can your AI partners be? I swear this is the equivalent of Sheva from Resident Evil 5, but here you could have your targets marked for destruction and yet your AI partner, one of which has a rocket launcher, will not take down the targets. It got to the point where I intentionally killed that partner because of how brainless he was and stopped playing not too long afterwards. Due to how low this is on the list, don't be too surprised if this ends up in the dishonorable mentions at the end of the year. Number 9 now, another anticipated game and this time it's from Rare with Sea of Thieves. Again, just like Far Cry 5, this game fell below expectation, mainly due to the lack of content and uninteresting world. Why this ranks above Far Cry is because Sea of Thieves is a game I was looking forward to and when I got it on launch day, the size of the map was one of the first things that caught my attention. Another criticism I have is the only time some real action takes place is when you join fellow players in pirate battles. If I had to choose between this and Far Cry 5 on what to play again, I'd choose Sea of Thieves any day, because Ubisoft still do not understand the word difficulty. Never have, and as far as I'm concerned, never will. Number 8. A game I only discovered thanks to Games with Gold, and to be honest, it doesn't play much different from the first game. But hey, 
If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Super Mega Baseball 2. This is a great follow-up to the first game where all this sequel needed was a polishing on the faults of the first game, which I found very few of, surprisingly. A great recommendation for sports fans and baseball fans in particular to keep them busy once the postseason of the MLB gets underway. Number seven now. What's this? An EA game in his top 10? Blasphemy! He does not like EA, therefore Electronic Arts should never feature in any of his top 10 best games in the history of forever! Yes, folks. Hear me out. A Way Out is a rare example of a game where co-op is absolutely necessary. And for me, it works! It does require strong, effective communication between you and your co-op co partner, however. Whether it's on online or local. And the best part is, you only need one copy of the game. Which is brilliant for those who play online a lot. Think of this game as a hybrid of Prison Break and Shawshank Redemption. Number six now, and here come the racing games. It's not F1 2018, it's not out yet, or Forza Horizon 4, not out yet either. Instead, it's a game called Gravel. Off-road racing and it's fast-paced, it's chaotic and all-round really good. Here, you're a racer on this program called Off-Road Masters and you need to collect stars to progress to the next stage. If you plan on 100%ing this game, this is definitely one to get all three stars in each race. Number five now, and I got Xbox Game Pass earlier this year, and my word it's awesome. Over 100 games at your fingertips, and then you get Xbox exclusives on launch day. One of them being State of Decay 2 earlier this year. I decided to play the first game so I had a feel of what to expect. Here, you can choose who you play as and each character has different stats. So choose wisely, as in a zombie apocalypse, when you die, you're perma-dead and have to change characters. It can be a grind at times, but if you can get past the grind, you'll be fine. Number 4 now, and who'd have thought a mobile game would be on this list? Last time this happened was back in 2016 with Pokemon Go. Here we have Hop. Hang on. Here we have Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. Set before the events of the books and films, you get to create your own Hogwarts student and embark on your own journey to be a great witch or wizard. Appearances from major characters in the series help keep fans engaged while meeting new characters helps keep the game fresh for those new to the series. Dialogue choices alongside the quests you do help improve relationships and your character stats in this... And hang on. Dialogue choices alongside the quests you do help improve relationships and your character stats and this in turn helps with progression in the game. A must play for Harry Potter fans. Did I mention it's free as well? Number three now, and Vegeta. What is the awesomeness of our rating? Hang on. Nope. Try again. Vegeta. What's the awesomeness of our next... Hang on. Vegeta. What's the awesomeness of our... Fridge. One more time. Vegeta, what's the awesomeness rating of our next entry? It's over 9,000! Excellent. That's how good Dragon Ball Fighter Z is. Taking gameplay mechanics made popular in the Marvel vs. Capcom games with 3 on 3 combat and being set in the Dragon Ball universe, you can play as your favourite characters from the popular anime and the combinations are near limitless. Fast paced, plenty of action, and all round awesome, with plenty of game modes to keep you busy for hours and days on end. This one comes highly recommended. Number two now. From the creators of Heavy Rain, we head to Detroit to become human. So many possibilities with this PS4 exclusive, which was worth the wait, in my opinion. Three androids programmed to obey their master's orders 
decided to go against the status quo and start a revolution to claim the same rights for androids that humans have. This is one of the best games with social commentary I have played in a long time. And if you want to platinum this game, have fun because you're going to be there for a while. Which works in the game's favour as it gives you so many choices and branch out options to change the story in so many ways. Plenty of replay value in this game and for me, a huge contender for game of the year. Alongside my number one pick so far. But before we get into that number one pick, as usual on these top 10 videos, for those that were with me on my previous channel, uh, it is time for the honourable mention section for games that didn't quite make the top 10. out of the way now let's get a recap of the top 10 so far number 10 far cry 5 number 9 sea of thieves number 8 super mega baseball 2 number 7 a way out number 6 gravel number 5 state of decay 2 number 4 harry potter hogwarts mystery number 3 dragon ball fighter z and number 2 detroit become human so what could our number one pick be well, let's find out. The series started in 2005 with three main entries and three portable entries alongside a, alongside a handful of HD collections. This year's latest entry has been praised universally by critics and fans. God of War. Kratos has a son called Atreus, and while he says Atreus isn't ready for hunting properly at the start, Kratos then ends up having to protect him from the various threats in one of the most visually stunning worlds I've ever seen since Horizon Zero Dawn last year. God of War 2018 is one of the best games of the current console generation. Everything from the engaging story, stunning visuals, faultless gameplay and a great cinematic style that sees the entire game played through as though it was shot like a movie in one take. This is, as it stands, my 2018 Game of the Year. Will it be Game of the Year by the time December rolls around? Tune in then to find out. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptised into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click the bell to join the Latter Day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. You can also let me know in the comments below if there are any games that I missed out. Be it missed out in the top 10 or missed out in the honorable mentions feel free to sound off in the comments below what your game of the year so far is and um <clears throat> tomorrow tom and jerry sins but until then i've got uh my bonus video for throwback thursdays on the left and the hang on uh my dedicated my new top 10 playlist which will be expanded on later down the road until then i'll see you guys tomorrow for tom and jerry sins enjoy the rest of your day folks peace out and stay faithful as always <laughs>